Imagine that you are a child, say eight years old. You are on a subway. It's busy morning and train is crowded. There is only one seat left, but the man sitting next to it has spread his legs wide open using half of the empty seat. A pregnant lady is standing in front of him. What did you think? Most of you probably thought, let's not act like him. He must sit properly and allow her to use empty seat. However, don't forget that you are only eight years old. Can a child tell a man how he should sit? Some of you might imitate his behavior in the future. Unfortunately, we can see this type of selfish behavior every single day. I'm sorry to say this, but it's true. Although you only imagine seeing him on a train, and each of you observed his behavior and learned something from him. That means he influenced your thoughts and maybe even your personality. Now I can say that all of us have been influenced by other people, not only family members and relatives, but also strangers around us. I believe their influence shapes our personality. One behavior that has great influence on us is discrimination, the topic we see more and more on the news. Personally, I still don't know how to answer this question. Why does discrimination happen? I'd like to tell you about my experience and about my friend. I went to New Zealand when I was 16 to learn English and spent three months there. I still remember that every morning when I entered the classroom, I was super nervous, so fearful that I felt like my heart would stop beating. Fortunately, my classmates were very kind to me, the girl who wasn't fluent in English. They tried to talk with me every day so that I didn't feel lonely. This is really good memory. However, not all my memories were present. The time I had to use a bus was hardest. In Japan, we pushed the button right before arriving at our destination to get off. It is quite different in New Zealand. When you get on, you have to tell the bus driver where you're getting off. I tried to explain where I wanted to go, but my English was terrible. And I saw he buses off with a gesture of go away. But when I finally got to ride on a bus, I felt like all of the people on the bus were staring at me. And that made me feel so scared. I felt like I had done something wrong and felt discriminated against at the time. Fast forward to two years ago when I was back in Japan. I was hanging out with one of my friends in Asakusa. He was a university student in the States and this was his first time visiting Japan. He suddenly asked me, why are Japanese people staring at me? And I replied, I think it's because it's not so common to see foreign people in Japan. And that's why some people are staring at you. I thought he simply stood out in a cloud because he is 1.9 meter tall. But I realized that. His different looks were also something made people stare at him. However, 
His question shocked me. Since until then, I was not aware how uncomfortable non-Japanese people feel in Japan, even though I had the same experience in New Zealand. Reflecting on my and his experience, now I can say these could lead to discrimination. Both of us were just stared at by strangers, and that made us feel uncomfortable. I presume that some of the people who stared at me on the bus were just kind people who worried about me looking helpless. It is also likely that some of the people who stared at my friend were just thinking, like, wow, he's super tall and cool. Whatever. No matter what they were thinking, they made us feel uncomfortable and even discriminated against. Therefore, it is important to consider how other people might feel from our action. Thinking back at my own childhood, I remember seeing many adults staring at foreign people on a street, on a subway, almost everywhere. When I caught the direction of adults' eye, I also stared at the same person, copying their behavior. And I continued doing that action unconsciously as I grew up. That's why I didn't even realize that this had become a natural reaction for me too. I was acting on a stereotype that I had, which could make somebody feel bad. Let me now tell you about how flexible children minds are and how easily they can change it. One famous American educator named Jane Ariel did an experiment called Blue Eyes, Brown Eyes exercise in her class the day after the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. in the 1968. The purpose of this was for children to experience discrimination and understand the impact. This experiment was held for two days. And the rule was simple. Divide class into two groups by eye color. Inferior eye color group must wear black color, and their school life had a lot of limitation. When Mrs. Ariel told the children that brown eyed people are better people, smarter than blue eyed people, the class changed. At first, students seemed somewhat confused, but only for about 15 minutes, after which they followed that rule and accepted their situation. One student in a brown eye superior group called his friend as Brewing, and most of the students in a superior group become more vicious. Also, the student in an inferior group accepted their situation and become more depressed. The authority of teacher in a student-teacher relationship is unquestionable. So even if the children think the teacher is wrong, they can easily accept and believe it. The result of this experiment made me realize that if presented by trustworthy authority figure, even a meaningless difference like different skin color, different eye color could make people feel that they have a different voice. Therefore, what we say and how we act can influence children to take on racist or pacifist ideas because they have more flexible minds than adults. After I learned Mrs. Ariel's experiment, I feel concerned that 
if many adults, including me, did something wrong. Children who will make up a future society might imitate a behavior unknowingly. For only two days, the student in a Mrs. Ariel experiment discriminated and hurt each other. And finally, they understood that it is wrong to judge people by their appearance. This experiment was held in 1968. Compared to now, there were more racist and discriminatory terms in the 60s. Discrimination was commonplace back then, and it took some time until we learned that we should not judge people by their skin color. Today, through tons of social media, most of us, no matter where we live, can instantaneously witness several protest activities, such as the Black Lives Matter movement. It should be easier to accept the fact that racial discrimination is wrong. That eight years old children in the experiment could realize in the end that discrimination is wrong. Why do we struggle to do the same? Perhaps I can now answer the question, why does discrimination happen? Only a person who uses stereotype could answer this question. I mean, everyone can answer this question. The society and community we grow up in makes us discriminate against others. Furthermore, we cannot change our beliefs even now because admitting that we were wrong in our lifetime is very courageous and difficult thing to do. I think that's why discrimination happens. And I'm afraid it will exist long after my generation. Now, what will you do when you see the man who, who behaves selfishly on a train? Who takes up the empty seat and keeps pregnant lady standing? As a child, you might only have the power to observe how the adults around you react. But now, as an adult, you have the power to be a role model. What is your reaction when you see the man who sticks out in a crowd? Or is of the different nationality? Do what you feel is right, but don't forget that your behavior is being observed, even unconsciously, by those around you, and that your actions can influence somebody's life. And please don't forget that even you can make people feel uncomfortable. And to avoid that, you need to think how other people might feel when they saw your actions. I will graduate and work as a nurse in 2023. I chose to become a nurse to help people to live comfortable lives. This includes being free of discrimination. And this is why I'm standing here today. Thank you.